Welcome to Alert Showcase, where we exhibit Alert beyond the financial institution and more of a lifestyle solution. On the Alert Showcase, expect more of fun, tech, and a bit of lifestyle. With me today, I have the CEO of TechPoint, um, Ifine, with your busy schedule today. Thanks for honoring our invites. Thank so, how are you today, Ifine? I'm fine. I'm fine. As, as your day been like? Uh, it's been great and it's wonderful being here. I know, like, the likes of the series, it's not easy just waking up in the morning. Of course, a lot of deliverables, expectations for management, targets, and all that. So, how have you been coping in this um, COVID era? Uh, so, first of all, we use a lot of tools to track our work. And then we also, um, you know, I mean, like you rightly said, it's, it's a lot of work trying to keep um, keeping track of track of people and also managing your own um, task and KPI. It could be a lot, but there we have a lot of tools to um, make that happen. So... Yeah, we were coping, we're surviving. Thank you very much. So today we'll be discussing the future of banking, digitization, and collaboration. The latest board's world has been digitization, digitization. So what's your take about digitization? So um, in the banking sphere, um, digitization is um, simply just trying to make um, banking convenient for people, banking convenient for, um, for clients. And we expect that, you know, uh, it's going to be a complete change from what we, what we have today. There's a lot of, uh, the, the banking um, system is, is fought with a lot of um, systematic challenges. And we, we expect that um, digitization will help us to leapfrog those challenges. That's why people keep talking about open banking, right? So open banking is like a banking where, you know, it's tomorrow's, tomorrow's banking pretty much. And it's going to be um, a bank, a banking system based on structural data, um, use of artificial intelligence, use of um, um, tools pretty much to help, you know, um, make it, make banking easier for the customers of bank and as well its clients as well. So, yeah, I picked up on one word you mentioned now. Structural data, for example, now. AI, artificial intelligence. Do you feel Nigeria as a country, do you feel we are we've embraced all those things. Like, so structural data is like, my bit, my understanding is that from the inputs, the likes of the account of playing form, all those kind of things, the data we get, do you think our data is well structured enough for, so most financial institutions still go to the likes of the telco to get data. So what's your view about that? Because I love the words you said, structural data, IAI. Mm -hmm. I don't think, do you think we are, at, we've embraced that as? Okay, so, so, yeah, so there are different um, sides to it and different components to it. So first of all, you have to look at the people who have the um, the skill set to build this technology. Do we have that? Yes, we do. And as we talk about the developer communities and then our um, our technology space, pretty much, it's it's advanced to a point where we have you know um, very good uh, people being able to build solutions that can solve this problem. But the data aspect of it is a different ball game entirely. Right, and this cuts across all sectors of you know um, of work in Nigeria, pretty much where there's there's um, the depth the the depth of data, and you're not able to use the data you have to make the decisions that you have, right? But again, we're we're beginning to see you know some people, um, some some organizations, you know some companies, you know do a lot around data, right? And and I and that is beginning to also you know have like. Um, a ripple effect, right? It's gradual. It's not. It's not as um, huge as we want it, but it's it's happening. it's happening. You know. So I know that there are roles that are coming up, like so. The being data analytics now, there are roles in organizations that speak to those kind of things. So I think yeah. organizations are adopting, the, and no, they know that definitely data is very key. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of conversation going about the bank of the future, the bank of the future. What's your take about that? And what do you what what what's your ideal bank of the future? Okay, so so personally, right, I I do not want to um, walk into the bank for any reason at all, right? From customer service to um, payments to um, to what have you, right? There's, there's there's a lot of reasons why people go go to the bank today, right? And for us, we we we, we, we see that as as a as a huge gap in the financial system, right? And and um, People are trying to uh, are trying as much as possible to avoid going to the banks. You go to the banks, you're going to see a lot of cues that will make you very uncomfortable, right? And when we now say the bank of the future, that's supposed to be like the next step to what banking is today, right? Where with data, with predictive data, you can you can with just a click from your phone, right? You can do everything that you have to do, right? I don't have to go to uh, my, I, I, don't, I don't have to go to my tax um, regulator to 
to, to become compliant. From my phone, all of the data are, you know, are integrated and harmonized, and you know, the, the government can, can assess my tax information, my, my insurance can, can, can um, the, the, the bank can also communicate with my, my insurance company and know if I'm, if I'm liable to some um, insurance benefits, or if also I can access some, you know, some, some loans, right? You know, having to check my credit ratings and credit score without having, me having to go fill a form somewhere or go, having to go make a call. We just, um, uh, we just um, a click of a button on your phone, right? All of this information are accessible and you can get them easy. And when it also comes to like payment as well, you know, it's just so easy. Like it's, it's a life um, 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 stress-free, you know, banking sort of. And that's what, you know, all of these old boards around you know, the banking of the future is about which is why they say it's it's the future and that's what we, we want it to be so it, my my take about trying to achieve the bank of the future are we saying that so as a financial institution now should they close down all their branches so you know okay you know what to be a bank of the future we need to close down all our branch but we know where we are we have the unbanked in this economy we have people that even have bank accounts so how are we going to achieve if we, if we give ourselves a milestone achievement for the next five to ten years what are your what methodologies what things what framework do you think we, we need to adopt to achieve the bank of the future so, so so this this is why you know we can't talk about the banking of the future without talking about data when you talk about the unbanked do we even have like an accurate estimate of the total number of unbanked population that we have right we need data to be able to to be able to know account for those who are within the banking system and those who are out of it, and then know what kind of solutions will be able to will be right will be best for those outside of it. But meanwhile, those within the banking, um, uh, I mean, all of this information are available with, um, with Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, right? And I mean, to, to some large extent, we, we take it as accurate because that's that's a, a body who have been doing that, you know, for us for a very long time, right? And you know, we can we 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 know those who are within the banking system, and they want better banking services. And the only way that would happen is to also, you know, um, cater for their needs as well, right? The people within the banking system also contribute a very large, you know, part of the money moving within the circulation, right? Because you can't, you can't look at the whole um, economy and, and how, you know, it's affecting the country's GDP and not talk about those who, within, those who are within the banking sector and the economic activities that they do that make, you know, um, the economy as a, as, as a whole thrive. So it's, 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 it's not a case of we're trying to leave one and then forgo the other. So there's, there's a need for integration in, from all sense, right? You're able to, to, to um, make life easier for those within the banking sector and also have enough data to, right, to now decide what kind of help or what kind of services is best for those who are not in the sector and how you, know, how you can then you know, bring in everybody, sort of. Thank you very much. So do you think um, collaboration within banks can help us achieve like in, re in regards to digitization so what's your take about collaboration i think collaboration is a good thing um, i mean we uh, just like you have it in traditional businesses and outside of you know normal you know um, tech space where you see collaborations you know leading to new um, businesses new business model the same way it is in the banking sector as well right so um, recently also i think last week the um, um, CBN released um, a framework for open banking, which was also what we call um, the bank of the future, right? And one of the one of the things in that framework um, is API, and API sort of is sort of like you know work where you have you know um, you have enough structural data to to um, for customers to like you know choose between uh, choose uh, what, which of the banks that they want to use, like sort of, sort of like a, a comparison banking. So as a customer. You know, because there's enough data to be able to, you know, compare what banks I can choose. Okay, I, I like, I, I, I like, I like to, I, I want to work with this bank, and you know, over the other, right? So banks can also use those data and information to now see areas where they can collaborate. I don't, we don't expect the, the um, to, um, digital, um, we don't expect digitalization or open banking to spur a one size fits all scenario where one bank does everything it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a full ecosystem where you have different people with different data sets you know being able to you know connect through apis to then work together and that's that's the only way we can achieve 
you know, um, um, the open banking system that we talk about. And we're, we're happy that we're beginning to see it. We're going to see the APES Bank, you know, leading that way. Although it's still a draft, we're hoping that you know, that draft becomes, you know, you know, true, and 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 then it it, it creates the result that we expect in the future. Yeah. So, um, what challenges do you think as the financial institution is currently facing now with um, digitization? So, my 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 take is that, like you said, now people endless queues in banks. Um, one major challenge is that I see that most we still have vaults as major way we keep money and all that so i'm trying to go into the likes of the crypt crypt cryptocurrency so the challenge is can you just try and address what do you see as challenges financial financial are currently facing for digitization and maybe cryptocurrency uh in terms of cryptocurrency yes you mean? so yeah. so the the what, the biggest challenge is uh, being able to combat fraud Although with transactions are you know quite you know genuine or not which is why you know the crypto conversation is a is a different conversation entirely, right? But but what people want when it comes to you know um, um, transactions like this is have it you know very transparent and open, and that's why we see governments they trying to you know come against come heavily against you know cryptocurrency you know um, um, companies because when, when we're talking about you know the future of banking, we want it to be easier and convenient for people, and we also want it to we also want it want it to be open enough right so i believe that in that regard um there's still there's still a lot of you know um, conversations and round table discussions that needs to be had with you know the players who are actually trying to you know solve real problems in that space and, and as well as the government because i mean there's there, there's there's there, there are problems in that space and um the crypto players are actually solving those solutions so just that you know get to the point where they're able to have that conversation and then come up with you know you know, proper guidelines that 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 you know that works for people in that you know that playing in that crypto space. So, uh, do you see Nigeria in the future where the means of tender for like currency would we have like a virtual kind of crypto thing in Nigeria? Do you see a future that for that to hold in Nigeria? Well, uh, thank God you call, you call this future. I mean, right now it's still within the banking sector and you know um, uh, payment space pretty much. Uh, digital, you know, digital space where people just pay for, you know, transactions. Uh, in the future, anything is possible in the future. Anything is possible in the future. But you, but you need you need the um, you need regulators who understand that this this is something that is valuable. And we're hoping that with all of the conversations that's going on within the uh, Senate and within the key uh, stakeholders of the, you know, financial um, space, that will happen. I mean. It, Nothing, nothing changes overnight, right? So I, I don't, I don't see a future where, where that's, you know, where the possibility of being able to trade, you know, um, usual fiat, trade um, crypto like the way we trade our usual fiat. I don't think it's, it's impossible. It can happen. Yeah. So let's just dive back to, of course, we know what we're currently facing now, the current pandemic and everything. So in this current pandemic, of course, the previous lockdown that we had. There's been an ever-changing customer behavior. There's been spikes in the numbers of, of course, there's no, branches are not open. So there's been spike in customer behavior, which has necessitated banks to want to employ more technology staff, want to invest more in infrastructure and everything. So how do you think um, digital banks are with, with this new normal? So, um, yeah, I mean, the pandemic has brought in a lot of changes and, um, Changes, changes have so many faces, right? But, but, but we, we believe that if we really want to... Uh, what, what, what we look at at the end of the day is the overall value, right? The overall value for, di um, for um, digital bank or the bank of the future, as, as we call it, um, uh, what, what is it at the end of the day, right? We want to make banking convenient for people, right? Just like the way you talk about the democracy, it says for the people, by the people, and for the people. So the same way banking services should primarily be for the people who want it, and as well um, companies who are you know creating um, business model around that you know um, building, building, building new businesses around that. So so long as you know that's you know um, um, what's what the word now. So long as that states 
is there and it is needed, then it's 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 very it's very much needed that you know um, banks also go you know full digital. We understand that it can come with some challenges of you know replacing humans with um, with um, machines and you know um, and tech and all of that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are meeting people at the point of their needs. So which is why which is why data will be very very important in that future. So I would expect a bank to say have like a role of you know um, a chief data officer whose major KPI is to uh, is whose, whose major KPI is to ensure that all of the data that I have with me is able to is able to um, you know come back with you know good returns like the ROI are based on the data sets that you have and it beats everybody at the point of their needs that process is not going to be a small role anyway so so it's it's a lot of work and. And banks should embrace it pretty much. Because I, I know that my intake was that during the pan during the, the lockdown when the um, government um, removed the um, old time limits and all that banking was were jam packed. Like and my own take was that have we have we fully adopted? I don't think we've actually. People are still scared of going to the electric channels to do transactions. I think there's still that fear. So, so, the, the, so the, that the, security. The there's, there's, there's a bit of education that needs to be done. You don't just introduce solutions without without so education. Should we the infuse it well. from? Because an example is going to um, institutions from um, tertiary institution. Do we need to go down that cadre to actually sensitize people about digitization? You get so because my belief is that people still come up with like there's um, the generation Y, the generation X that they are they have adopted these things, but I'm sure upper level. Our parents don't really. I know of my uncle and people that they never, they never want to go close to an electric channel. So how do you preach the gospel of digitization to those kind of people? So they, I think they are the you just generation. You just keep doing it. I, I think the, the the best approach is to keep doing it because you don't you don't you don't um, keep you don't hit um, a, a so so so, for, so if you're expecting water to come out of a rock, you don't hit it once. You keep doing it over time and then. What has start coming out from that channel? So that's the same way. It also works with with with, with you know, approaches to, to to different areas of life, right? Um, sensitization is not, is, not some, is not a thing you start and then you stop. Just like you said, you know, there are people who who have this you know stronger affinity with with uh, electric electrical means of you know transacting. The same way you have people who who are ready to you know once they see that that means works. They would. I mean, I, I during, during the lockdown, I, I saw a lot of queue at the bank, and I asked myself, if these means were available, right, most people, most people would not be on that queue. If that means were available for for people, there a lot of people want to talk to the customer service. You probably have been calling customer service for a very long time, and you cannot reach them. There are times where I had to send mails through in the lockdown. I my mails were not returned until I had to call. Right, so because of these bottlenecks, people find the alternative means, or alternative uh, means, which at times negate the whole idea of you know digital banking or the whole idea of you know of um, you know um, the banking of the future. So it's it's something that we have to continue doing. Like the awareness, the sensitization is a continuous uh, um, uh, process, and over time, it would happen pretty much. Thank you. So I know you are a guru in the tech space. So I, having work with your experience within the tech space, so what areas do you think you are more you've been impressed with um, banking industry um, in terms to technology, technology and digitization? So what areas you? Okay, I so, think so this is more very pers- I think this is a personal question. I, I like the evolve um, like different evolutions I've seen around. Um, um, loan disbursement and the companies you know doing um taking up loan um uh, challenges so i mean we all know that in those days when you, when you, when you, when you try to go to the bank to go get loans for your business or for some personal needs like it's always it's always a challenge people say the banks do not give loans people say the banks do not support um small businesses or people who need startup capital for their businesses but these days we've seen different players you know come up in that space to make um, to make that, to, to take that problem, right? So then you could just dial a, a, um, um, a USSD code and you get a loan from a bank, right? And that for me is a huge leap from what banking used to be. I mean, there are a whole lot of different areas where, you know, banking has evolved from, you know, a previously 
not so great state to very good but for me personally that's for me is a good you know is a very very good way although it still has its own bottleneck because um, one of the things I, I know players who are trying to find a way to you know to make um, to harmonize you know credits you know score check among all of the different you know players where if I'm owing a particular um, loan um, um, a particular loan company I, I can't go and get it from somewhere else. And that, and that, and that is even beginning to happen, right? I was having a conversation, um, I think, December last year, where, and I, someone told me, someone told me that what is building, like, solution is building is around that, where, you know, they're able to harmonize that credit score, you know, and make it available for, you know, for, for any um, credit, uh, credit company at a, at a minimal fee. And that, for me, is superb. And if it's already happening there, then there are so many areas of banking where this, you know, very um, transformative um, 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 state or is it already beginning to happen as well. Yeah. So um, if I would ask you five major, major futures that you want your bank of the future to have. So if, they, if you're given the opportunity to sit like, we just give me a, a wild card. Tell us just five major futures you want your bank of the future to have. Okay, so I first of all I want to be able to again all of this depends on data and data is something that is that is built through APIs and integration. I want to be able to uh, renew my international passport without having to go to the passport office. With my bank, it's possible, right? I want to be able to pay uh, my um, I want to be able to become tax compliant, you know, from my bank app without having to um, go to like um, go to the um, Lagos State's um, tax collector, you know, to, to sort of like go through all of those, you know, backend channels, right? Uh, so I, I'm not sure I can think of five off, like off the sh um, top of my head, like five different features, but there's a, there's a whole lot of, you know, different pain points where you feel like this is something that your bank should have been able to do for you. I've seen, I've seen um, banks do e-commerce these days, so I, I can't say that's a, a huge problem. But there are still, you know, issues around, you know, um, payments, um, delays, uh, maybe customer service as well. I think customer service is also something that I feel like um, it should be it should be seamless because the idea is to make banking convenient for 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 the, for the customer or the client, like so so convenient, right? And also in terms of you know um, B two B relations, like I mean the bank and you know business um, other customers it does business with. There's a whole lot that, that you can think of, but uh, but I think I'll just leave leave with this this thing. And the funny thing is that the funny thing is that a lot as a uh, platform, all this will be definitely be available sooner. So of course, so it's always a thing of we two. I think we always our uh, our mindset is the future. Of course, so the generation Y, generation X, we tend to want to attend to their needs. So definitely, that's why I had to pick out five things okay. back of my head. Those things in few months, few weeks. Those things will be achieved. That'll, that'll, yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. That'll so, nice. Um, just to at least, just f at least to wrap up. So, what major trends do you think banks should start considering? So, if I want to position myself as a bank of the future, what major trend should banks and financial institutions be adopting? Uh, so, I think most of them are something that we've said here and there. So, collaboration is a very huge um, part of that. Uh, we need to see banks collaborating more. And uh, like I said earlier on, the, um, the, the CBN drafts for open banking that was, that was released last week, by the time it, it comes out, there needs to be a whole lot of, you know, like, um, there needs to be more um, open data being shared between banks. And that, that also comes down to collaboration as well. So just like we have, so collaboration needs to be a thing pretty much, right? So we, 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 don't, we don't want a situation whereby you know, um, a bank says, I want to build all solutions, right? You can build all solutions, but are you also making, uh, are you also making it easier for people to also plug into, you know, your, your um, products or plug into your infrastructure to also, you know, deliver better solutions to your own customers as well. So all of those collaborations need to happen. And that for me, I think is a, is a, is a big step. That is a big step. Thank you very much. Um, it was it was quite insightful, and you know, no honest, I've learned a lot. Like sitting with you has actually given more insight too. And I definitely hope that, of course, with people like you in the society, we definitely get there soonest. So it was really it was really fun having and spending time with you. 
and and it was quite insightful so um we hope to have you again on our last showcase definitely soonest um and um to our watchers thank you so much for joining us our last showcase times see you again another time thank you very much That's correct. Um, most likely. Um, I'm not sure about that. Probably. I'm not sure. Well, I will definitely give that a try. Most likely. Incorrect. Um, probably incorrect. Absolutely. Before for me, I'm not sure. one of the spots on the die. Guys, uh, I don't know. She not actually. Uh, no idea. The Great War, Berlin or something. The U.S. Washington D.C. No idea. <laughs> Yellow Strong Park. Uh, not sure. <laughs> Abel Peter. And that's with the same. Wow. I didn't see this coming. I can't think of it. <laughs> Chewing the doors. Yeah. Closing the door. Yeah. What song can I hear the word myself? Um, 
मोनी ने दिल्ली दो Time. I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> See, I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> <laughs> 